The major maker of COVID-19 vaccines says it will ship pre-manufactured factories to African countries so that African countries can produce their own COVID-19 vaccines. Currently, only a small fraction of Africa's people have been vaccinated against the virus. Here are the details. The Associated Press reports that vaccine maker BioNTech unveiled plans on Wednesday, February 16th to ship pre-manufactured COVID-19 vaccine factories to Africa. These factories are modular units that are pre-fitted with all the equipment required to make COVID-19 vaccines. Each factory is separated into 12 modules that are each the size of a standard shipping container. The 12 containers will be shipped to a port nearest to the target site, where they will be placed on trucks and transported by road to the site. There, the containers will be assembled into two separate units made up of six containers each. The first unit is where the substances are prepared. This is where the mRNA material is produced before it is purified and concentrated. These prepared substances are then moved to the second unit, where the substances are combined so the drug can be formulated. The last step, where the completed product is placed into bottles, labeled and packaged, will happen in a separate factory that would be owned and operated by local partners. BioNTech says the first factory will be shipped to either Senegal or Rwanda in the second half of this year. The company aims to start production of up to 50 million doses of vaccine a year within the next 12 months. Why Oxford AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine can cause blood clots is a question that has been asked for months now, and scientists may finally have an answer. Here's what you need to know. The trigger for rare blood clots occurring in patients who receive the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine may be a type of protein in the blood that is attracted to one element of the vaccine, according to a new study in the Science Advances Journal cited by the BBC. The University of Oxford's vaccine uses a genetically modified common cold virus from chimpanzees to carry blueprints for the coronavirus's spike protein. This virus vector then helps program an immune response against a real coronavirus. The new study found that if the vaccine enters the bloodstream, it can attract a type of protein called platelet factor 4. From there, in extremely rare cases, the body's immune system can confuse platelet factor 4 for the virus vector and release antibodies to attack it. When this happens, the antibodies and platelet factor 4 can cluster together, resulting in blood clots. The BBC points out that vaccine-induced clots like these have been linked to just 73 deaths out of nearly 50 million doses of AstraZeneca given in the UK, while AstraZeneca said the vaccine is thought to have saved more than a million lives around the world and prevented 50 million cases of COVID. The clots are more likely to occur because of a COVID infection than the vaccine, according to a spokesperson for the company. The COVID-19 vaccine made by AstraZeneca and the University of Oxford uses a genetically modified common cold virus from chimpanzees altered with blueprints for the coronavirus's spike protein. The coronavirus's outer coating is covered in spike proteins, which give the virus its crown-like appearance. The spike protein possesses receptor-binding domains, or RBDs, that the virus uses to pry open receptors before penetrating the cellular membrane. The AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine carries a gene with the code for the spike protein that the coronavirus uses to enter a human cell. The spike protein gene is cut from the coronavirus and inserted into a vector, a virus that is weakened so that it cannot grow inside the human body after injection. The AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine's chimpanzee adenovirus vector was previously used to make an Ebola vaccine. The chimpanzee adenovirus is genetically modified so that it cannot infect people while the gene with the code of the spike protein is inserted. Once the vector delivers this genetic code to a cell, it causes the cell to produce spike proteins. These spike proteins are harmless on their own, but they could trigger the body to mount an immune response. This response produces antibodies and memory cells that will recognize SARS-CoV-2, the actual virus that causes COVID-19. The antidepressant fluvoxamine, sold under the brand name Luvox, could reduce risk of severe COVID-19 symptoms by almost a third in high-risk patients, according to a new study in the Lancet Global Health Journal, which gave around 1,500 volunteers with COVID-19 100 milligrams of the drug twice a day for 10 days. According to one study author cited by CNN, the drug targets two dangerous immune responses prompted by COVID-19 infections, the production of inflammatory molecules called cytokines and the production of blood platelets, both of which account for some of the most serious COVID symptoms. Cytokines are small proteins produced by the body's immune cells after coronavirus infects the lungs, according to pharmaceutical company Insight. They bind to receptors on cells, signaling for those cells to adjust how they grow or behave in order to direct an immune response against a pathogen, including causing inflammation. 
The problem cytokines can cause is that as part of an immune response, they attract additional immune cells, which in turn produce additional cytokines. If too many cytokines are produced, they can overwhelm the body and create what is known as a cytokine storm, according to live science. Cytokine storms and COVID infections can cause excessive inflation, which damages lung cells, scar tissue can form that prevents oxygen from passing into the bloodstream, and weakened blood vessels can allow fluid to fill up lung cavities, which causes respiratory failure. Fluvoxamine may reduce its production of cytokines, according to one of the professors from the Lancet study cited by CNN, and it may also reduce levels of blood platelets. Blood platelets circulate within our blood, binding together when they recognize damaged blood vessels, and the U.S. National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute says COVID-19 infections make them more prone to forming potentially deadly blood clots. In the Lancet study, 741 volunteers with COVID-19 received fluvoxamine, while 756 volunteers got a placebo. Just 11% of those given fluvoxamine needed hospital treatment versus almost 16% given placebos. Researchers in South Africa are tracking the rise of Omicron, a new COVID-19 variant of concern within the context of a large spike in cases in the South African province of Gauteng, 90% of which were from the new highly mutated variant, according to Deutschwelle. The Guardian reports that scientists in South Africa and Botswana separately submitted discovery of the variant on November 23rd, and the journal Nature notes that many of the 30-plus mutations to the coronavirus spike protein that characterize it are linked to the ability to evade infection-blocking antibodies and heightened infectivity. Penny Moore, a virologist in Johannesburg, told Nature there are also hints the variant could dodge herd immunity conferred by T-cells, though Omicron's effect on vaccine efficacy and disease virulence is not yet clear. Richard Lessels, an infectious disease physician, said at a press briefing organized by South Africa's health department on November 25th that there is concern the variant may already be circulating widely in South Africa. Since it was sequenced, the variant has now also been discovered in Britain, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Denmark, Belgium, Israel, Australia, and Hong Kong, according to Reuters. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.